Hello everybody! Welcome back to another episode on the Azuminati server! How's everybody doing today? Hopefully you're doing pretty good. I myself, I'm pretty good myself. I'm actually kind of excited. A, we just got this pretty awesome mob spawner in behind me that we threw together last episode. But also, also, I just broke 50 subscribers. Hi guys! There's, there's more than 50 of you guys who seem to like the craziness that I'm doing. The shenanigans, the weirdness, the punching at the ground. Whoop, too close. You saw my pants. Oh no! Why is there purple? What's purple on me? Oh, it's the bottom of the boots. Uh -huh. Yes, see, and there's 50 some of you on that subscribe to that crap. <laughs> so thank you that's what I have to say to start thank you guys for subscribing I'm having a blast I'm really enjoying myself I'm really you know looking forward to like let's record let's do more you know I want to keep playing I want to keep pushing to get more stuff done and, and I mean so far I've been able to keep a schedule of roughly a video every two days that's pretty crazy, seeing as this is not my job. I have a full-time job. Um, my fiance is just very, very accommodating. She lets me record. Uh, pretty much whenever I want to. And, okay, I'm really not putting, you know, like, five hours a day towards this type of thing. It's, it's maybe an hour or two, and then, you know, there's a day for editing and, and you know, proofing and, and stuff like that but you know I'm, I'm really not putting that much time into it and yeah so before we get started there's a couple of questions first off besides minecraft besides here on the Azuminati server and besides my Mod Sauce 2 single player series, which I am still trying to get rid of the backlog, uh, do you guys want to see any other games? I do have a s selection, um, and fortunately, you know, the, the financial situation is, is starting to work in my favor that maybe I can squeeze another game out and, and, and purchase something. Would you guys like to see me, you know, run through an, a game? You know, check out some uh, various different titles. Uh, I mean, I've been playing things like FPSs and RTSs for many, many years. I, I got started on RTSs all the way back with the original Command & Conquer. Uh... FPS is probably Goldeneye on the N64 is where I started in on that one. Uh, not that I can record that because I don't have an N64. Uh, that I don't think they would have screen capture programs anyway. But computer games. Are you guys interested in seeing anything else besides Minecraft? If not, that's just fine. I'm going to keep doing Minecraft. I'm going to keep doing Azuminati. It's a lot of fun. But, you know, there are some games I play in my off time. You know, and I'll, I'll run around and kill stuff. You know, I mean, I've almost beaten Shadow of Mordor, which is a pretty fun beat-em-up game. Uh, you know, I played Ark for a little bit, but, yeah. There's a huge bubble on YouTube for Ark, and... Uh, I don't know. I just, I can't get into it. Ark is one of those games that you need, like, 10 hours to play it. Because taming a dinosaur just takes that long. And I just, I couldn't justify that kind of time anymore. Especially when you keep losing stuff to glitches and bugs and weirdness. And yeah, I just, I couldn't handle it anymore. But yeah, let me know. So today's episode... All the ranting aside, we're going to be finishing this guy up. Now, in between episodes, I did... Uh, well, I got a lever. Ooh, a lever! Pull the lever! 
Yeah, who gets that reference? Um, I, I increased the amount of spikes down there, and I enchanted them. All nine of them down there are enchanted with sharpness five, looting three. You know how long that took me? Oi. But there is actually a really cool tip for anyone playing the Azuminati mod pack. Well, or any mod pack for, in general that has MFR. Uh, to get a good amount of enchantments. And that's this guy. The auto disenchanter. Now what he will do is he will grab an item. And with a book supply, it will randomly remove an enchantment from that item and put it onto the book. So you don't lose any enchantments. You just lose it on that item. Well, unfortunately, it is random. So you can't sit there and say, oh, no, my pick got fortune and I wanted silk touch. And, you know, it. well, it might remove your unbreaking. I mean, you could always reapply it with an anvil, but that costs extra levels. I mean, of course, levels are uh, of no consequence with my pretty much infinite supply down there. Thanks to it being connected to all sorts of mob farms. I mean, pretty much uh, the, the Blaze farm and the Cursed Earth farm. Uh, oop. See, look at that. Forgot to add on. Um, they feed into a Bedrockium drum under there that, that feeds into that. Um, but if you excuse this super white glare, because these guys are glitched when it shows enchanted objects and it has to scroll. But like all these enchanted books, they only have one enchantment on them because I ran them all through that thing. But what you do to get looting and stuff like that enchant golden swords because gold for you know for all of its weaknesses with durability is really good at holding enchantments so you get you know better enchantments so you get looting you pull it off you stick it on a diamond spike it's all good anyway um so this thing been the thing has been running for for quite some time i had to put drawers in and that chest What's up with that chest? Um, oh, I also switched to a vacuum hopper uh, just to deal with the experience. And it deals with the items too, so that's all good. We don't need that ender collector anymore. Um, yeah, 41,000 blaze rods already. Uh, these have void upgrades, so it's all good. Don't have to worry about that. Um, I do, however, want to move the storage to the surface. So we're going to have to do some piping, and that's fine. That's... That's super simple. What I really want to do is is have a better way than just flying up here and pulling the lever to, to turn it on and off. And I did actually devise a method that I think is really cool. And it actually unlocks the option for a few other things in the future. Now... What I'm going to want to do is is first off let's get let's get the storage sorted out. So in this new new bag I made, I now have an orange one called base supplies. I've got some carpenter stairs. So let's you know what? Let's actually go back another block. Let's do something like that. New like that. Uh, there we go. And then if we put the drawers here, we can kind of run the piping up and under. Uh, I will, however, need something I completely forgot about because I'm a derp face. Go down, please. It did it. I will need. I will need something I do not have. I don't have it. That's okay. I can make them. Oh, whoops. Oh, yes. Aha, that does remind me. Uh, wrong way. Um, the, this fire charging cap uh, will we'll go in here and this is used to make uh, Ganny's nether uh, this guy 
um, the ignore spawn rules. So it's it requires four fire charging caps. I just I don't have the the blazing it's to finish making all four. But this guy, what he'll do is he will uh, allow the spawner to ignore light levels, which would mean that we would not have to use dark glass. We could use uh, whatever type of glass we want. So that's a question I pose to you. It doesn't really matter too much to me one way or another. My question to you is, do you like it where it's, you know, dark glass and, and you know, it's kind of this gloomy building? And, I mean, it gets great spawns. It really does. Uh, but I can get those spawns easily enough just by uh, ah what are the odds uh, just just by adding that uh, uh, adding that upgrade so if I add that I could switch it to clear glass I can put lights in it we can comp okay as I was saying before the server decided to boot me, um, if we switch to this ignore spawn rules thing, we would be able to go with regular glass and probably add lighting and stuff like that. And would that kind of thing be preferable? You know? Do you think it would work better for the design of the farm if that's the way it looked? That's a lot of golden hearts. Uh, oh, seriously, 160 is all it holds. That's okay. Void upgrade. Um... Oh, yeah, seriously, that crash, it it completely threw my train of thought out of whack. Um, hmm. Yes, the question has been poised. Would you rather it be, you know, stay as is, nice and dark, or should we worry about that upgrade? Now, the other factor to consider with that upgrade is there's no room for more upgrades on this particular spawner. In order to upgrade it further, I would actually need to uh, destroy it. I would need to completely replace it. I do have another blaze spawner. But because this one has no more room and it does not have the silky upgrade on it. Uh, well, no, I wouldn't really need to destroy it. I would need to completely remove it, though, and, and not use this one. I would have to start with my second one and from scratch and get all the upgrades in it. And rather than putting all of the quantity upgrades in it, put the light level upgrade in it. But... So no, I, w I won't actually lose anything. But let me know. Let me know what you think. And in the meantime, ta-da, storage has been moved to an official spot. Um, and it's pretty cool. So next on the list, actually, is my idea for how to turn the farm on and off. And it actually involves a little glass window Oh, a little glass window. It's so cute. Look at that. It saves the day. Um, it's actually a really interesting solution. Uh, from Ganny's end come these block shifters. Now, my original plan was to block shift that piece of redstone 
from the shifter to the spawner and back. Well, unfortunately, it came to my attention that you can't do that. Uh, if you if you try and do that, it will break. Yeah, the uh, yeah the the shifter just goes crazy because redstone is what powers the shifter. So redstone block on top, it tries to shift and then it loses power, so it tries to shift back and then it shifts and then it shifts back and shifts and shifts back and shifts and shifts back. It, it breaks. It goes, like I said, it goes nuts. Um, so what I decided instead is, well, we can shift the spawner. We can just completely shift the spawner. Well, because it deactivates with redstone, well, and we're going to shift it right on top of this block shifter, have a couple of blocks of redstone next to it. Well, I did test this, and there's one thing extra we need to do, and that's this block update detector. Now, this is an extra utilities block. It's really easy to craft, and it works like the vanilla bud switch. Now, vanilla bud switches are a little bit of an unintentional quirk of redstone mechanics, but they've become so commonplace in your redstone machines. And, and here it is in a single block form in mods, and it does the exact same thing. As soon as there's a block update, it flashes and goes, Hey! Hi! How's it going? And what it will do is it overcomes the issue that I had when shifting in that it just pop there it goes it doesn't detect any kind of block change it doesn't detect that from here to inside the box it's no longer touching redstone it still sits there and goes i haven't been told i'm supposed to be active yet well the same goes for reverse when you shift it out of the box next to the redstone it would be like what there's no redstone next to me i'm gonna keep spawning so the block update detector will sit there and go, hey, I detected something new, and it bounces back a signal to the spawner, and the spawner goes, oh, okay, I should turn off. So it does. Now, that's pretty cool. I really like that. Now, I'm pretty sure this ender tag should still have... Uh, yep. It still has the information to grab the spawner. Perfect. Uh, like I said, I tested it. Now, what that also means then is that we need a block update detector inside the spawner here instead of the redstone block. So we need to stick that guy there, which fortunately cannot be grabbed by pistons. And then we can just kind of take this out. And with a couple extra spare pieces of glass. There we go. Ta-da! Something like that. Now, if we... Do we have a lever lever? We do have a lever lever. Oh, we had, already had one in our inventory. <laughs> uh, if we ta attach a lever lever and click... See, there he is. He's in there. And if we click it again, it's a little uh, inconveniently placed. Boom, there he is. And you can briefly see the bud flash, which updates them. So that's really cool. Now, all it needs is, is an on-off switch. So we're gonna do ourselves a little bit of redstone wiring. Yeah, we're gonna stick a button like that there. These are buttons. See? Clicky, clicky. And the more you click it, it stays powered. It's a pretty cool button. Um, I just like them because they're a full block. Uh, unfortunately, people on the server didn't exactly know that those were buttons. Because... Yeah, I, I'd use them at, uh, 
at my dog and cat shop and, and people were like, what are these? And they would not hit them. And, and yeah. I, I did eventually solve the mystery of what happened to some of the pets that were supposed to be behind closed doors. For display purposes only. So that should give us a redstone signal, and it does, because it's redstone, so come on, it's a little predictable. And what we want to do is run redstone into that block there, which I'm actually going to not make dirt just because I hate putting redstone on dirt, simply because it, I, I just hate it. <laughs> um... We're going to see if I can build this properly. I think it goes something something like this, where we go backwards, up, facing forward, and down. I think that's the T-flip-flop. I could be mistaken. Yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. Um, I do, however. I don't. I don't. I don't. Oh. I need half slabs. Half slabs. Come to me, my half slabs. Half slabs. And just while I'm here, I may as well grab some redstone torches in case I need to get a little trick here with the redstone. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard. Um, and while we're on the topic of no redstone on dirt, let's get rid of that. And that should do something like that. And then can we... Can we do a full block like that? If this works, that'll be amazing. Nope. No, uh, it's because I'm doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. I'm a dirt pet as per usual. Uh, it needs to be this one that's powered. Oh, I'm such a derp. You'd think I'd never built these things before. So I guess it's a good thing we grabbed the redstone torches. Aha! It's gone. And it's in there. And now if we hit the button again... It, it did bring it back. Good. And if we hit it again... Ta-da! My little fanfare. Uh, we put the basalt there. Basalt there. 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 And we got this little viewing window. It's so cute. We hit the button. Pop. There's our little spawner. Hi, little guy. We got all our drops. Easily accessible. Lots of sulfur. Gonna have lots of hearts and miscellaneous trophies that we really don't need. We can, you know, decorate an entire room with trophies. Uh, and all the blaze rods we wanted. And look at that. Look at that cool upgrade. Isn't that snazzy? So now when you're walking by, you can sit there and go, Hey, little blaze down there. Go get me some kills. Ha ha ha. Isn't that so cool? Isn't that so cool? I know you guys don't think so because you're, uh, well, you're doomed. So yeah. What do you think of my little upgrades? You think they work? You think they're cool? I don't know. A little more official. I think they're pretty cool. I like this little viewing thing. You just kind of sit there and go... Watch the blaze. Um, with that amount of, amount of delay, I might actually switch to a different button. Because that's got a, quite a bit of delay to it. Uh, 
but yeah so that's that project done and I'm gonna check the episode time that's probably eaten up most of the episode but we shall see alrighty well that whole thing did kind of fill up the whole episode time there's a little bit of room a little bit of wiggle room wiggle wiggle um, and that I'm gonna use to do a little bit more gabbing at ya. I know, chatty, chatty, chatty. Um, but I do want some feedback on what you think of the two things we we mainly discussed. And a that is, should we go with Plan B, Blaze Spawner? with the light level upgrade so that we can switch the spawner to a normal glass. Uh, I'd probably still go with a dyed glass, but you know, maybe I'd go like yellow or, or red or something like that for blazes, you know, and that would look pretty cool. Uh, the second thing to comment about is, are you interested in seeing me play other games? And if so, what you got on the plate? So, that's, that's what the, those are the questions. That's your homework for today. Um, and now what we're going to do at the end of this episode is, is look over here. And I've got this to-do list. Uh, I, I stole this idea from Azuma. I saw him doing that on this server. And I'm like, that's a pretty good idea. Uh, so, we can actually strike off that one right there. Because the Blaze Farm is done. It's, a, it's as finished as it's going to get. So, some of these are big, some of them are small. I mean, making some tesseracts, that's pretty easy. Uh, you know, changing my storage around, that's actually going to be really tricky. I mean, it sounds easy, but it's such a snug little space. There's, like, barely any room between these floors. Uh, so... We'll see how tricky that would be. Uh, I do really want to get those nether farms up and running. Um, I was thinking the other day I need a furnace array. I mean, I've got this one redstone furnace. And I mean, sure, it's resonant and it's got all the speed upgrades. But still, there's times when I'm smelting stacks upon stacks upon stacks of items. And I, it would be nice to be a little faster. So we could do something like that. Uh, you know, tree farm, battery bank, etc., etc., etc. So, this actually, I guess, turns to question number three, of which I didn't have plans to ask, but okay. What do you want to see next? This is a choose your own episode. <laughs> if you remember those choose your own adventure books. Um, I mean, you don't have to make a choice. I'll make a choice. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think we should do next. Let me know what you think we should do about the spawner and about possibly playing other games. Now, to the end of the episode, as I tried to start actually a couple episodes ago and I completely forgot in the past two, uh, Continuum Orbs. We were going to do three of them at the end of every episode and I completely derped out and forgot. Every time I'm like, oh... I forgot to do the Continuum Orbs again. Well, I have a whole bunch of them now. I've got 72 left after these three. So let's gamble, hey? So orb number one. Wall. Yeah. Blue pillar quartz blocks. Eh. Eh, I might use them. You never know. Ooh. Whoop, I need my magnet. We'll keep them. See, here's the other blaze spawner. Uh, anyway, orb number two. Triple compressed dirt. All right, well, I mean, dirt's dirt, I guess. That's actually a lot of dirt. That's a lot of dirt. And I mean, that's cool. I use dirt. Um, orb number three. Uh, orange bricks. All right, well, you know, it's not the greatest. It's not the greatest. 
but oh well. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. Hopefully it wasn't too much of a chatty chat. You know, I just sit here and flap my gums at you and you all sit there and go, Oh my god, they won't shut up. So, if you liked it, be sure to hit that like button. Go clicky clicky. Leave me a comment. Answer some questions. Do it. And most importantly, be sure to come back for next episode. Because guess what? That'll be number 20. Look at that. I mean, today's episode 19. Can you imagine it? 19 episodes? I know. Compared to some people, it's such a small number. But to me, that's pretty big. It's pretty big. I'm excited. So, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.